Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, so today my wish that I've had for many, many, many years has come into fruition. Uh, over the, the summer of 2016, the fine folks over at IQFeed decided to uh, release a downloadable IQFeed version of their client uh, with uh, for Mac. So that's been up and running, or you could download that since uh, July. And that's all done through Wine. Uh, and again, that's a Windows uh, open source uh, compliant uh, library for Linux, but it's been ported to Mac as well, and this is how they do it. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give you a walkthrough of their developer API for my key feed. Now, first, I just want to mention a big kudos and thanks to the fine folks over at IKeyFeed uh, because uh, I look at IKeyFeed as being my financial data crack provider. That's kind of important to know because what I'm about to show you will give you a lot of edge for a very low price. And to anybody out there that questions this, uh, should ask themselves to get the equivalent data on Bloomberg will cost you thousands of dollars a month. Whereas what I'm going to show you with the API uh, ability is, is a steal. Now, if you cannot afford this for the kind of data you're looking for, uh, I will keep saying this trading is not for you. Okay. If you're not willing to spend a couple hundred bucks a month to get really good, important uh, data, but there are ways to save data as well. Historical, I'll try to show you that. All right. So, you know about my IQ feed, uh, video playlist on YouTube, on my YouTube, uh, quant labs channel. So, uh, let me just show you what we've got here. We've got here um, the IKeyFeed app here that's running. This is again a Mac. Obviously, I'm running on the latest version of Mac. Uh, I'm using NetBeans, the latest version of NetBeans for the Java IDE. And of course, I'm going to show you the Java. I'm not showing you code, but I'll just show you what the code does. And this is from the API developer part for IKeyFeed, which is a couple hundred bucks to get the license each year. And it's well worth it with what I'm going to show you. Okay, so let me show you the very first app. So when you come in you will and you get your IQ feed, you'll get access to these examples and you download those and install them. Okay. So that's fine. So the first one you'll need to look at is launching the feed. Now this gets kind of wonky and it took me a while to figure it out, but I'll put up a, um, a blog post with the video or this video and showing you how to get to this point and where I'm at. So, what you typically will do is you would enter in your IQ feed um, uh, app or run it, but you'll notice when you enter in your your uh, credentials, nothing like like your connect button will not be enabled, um, even though you put in your credentials, and that that screwed me up for many months. And and then I went to the developers uh, support and I said, hey, like how do I get this working? So it says we have to. Sounds like you have to run it from the back end through. A, a program when I'm about, like one I'm about to show you to connect into the this is basically like a server uh, this IQ feed okay and it's like a server so you have to connect into it via this app launching the feed okay so what you do is here uh, I've proven myself I've kind of got it working and not working but typically what this app will do and again this is ja the Java um, one of the Java samples this this launch launch the um, launch, launch launching the feed example so pretty well what happens is is uh, uh, you may need to enter in the IQ connect location now there, when their support guys Tim said uh, try this that seemed to work this is the app this is this is the call you need to make in your OS 10. Uh, or Mac OS terminal to launch this guy. Okay, so this is how you do it in this uh, uh, field here, and you pass in this open hyphen a I key feed just like that and put in here. Okay, then once you launch it, this will put in your product ID, which is when you uh, get the service for I key feed. This is pre configured when it launches. And then what you need to also do is put your login ID and your uh, password, okay, and then launch the feed. And everything will should run. And then your IDE console, NetBeans, what you're looking for is this message right here. 
uh, this guy right here. It'll say IQ connect connected to the server. Okay. Because without that, you're not able to run any of the other apps that I'm about to show you. Okay. So it looks like we've got everything running uh, as is, um, as I've said. And uh, let's go check out some other apps. Okay. This is the power of, of, um, of, uh, IQP, especially on the develop on the developer end, the API. So here you'll notice that we've got some console benchmark tool. Now I'm not sure which ones will run, but I can confirm right now that uh, they will not run um, because what we'll do is it's in in the code, and I'm not going to go in the code and uh, change this, but it's it's looking for the location of IQ Connect. Okay, as I said, what you need to do. Here in the launch the feed, you have to enter in that one if, when you're on Mac, the where, where that IQ uh, connect exit uh, file is. So this is the console apps will not work, but the GUI ones will because the GUI ones are reliant are dependent on the launch the feed connecting into the uh, IQ feed server, and then it's those other apps I'm about to show you that will assume that you've already connected manually into IQ feed. And if you try to load them without uh, the connection into IQ feed, what will happen is it'll just come back and say, you need to get that running first before uh, you can launch the app. So let's check out some of these um, apps. So we know that the console apps won't work uh, as is. So we, we could check out some of the GUI ones. So let's check out this one. Uh, let me just run it. Okay, so this is the history socket. Now, this this is an important one because a lot of people come to me and ask me, well, how do I get data? How do I get uh, historical data and tick data? Well, when you go out and you get the data, it's very expensive. And I'm talking about tens of thousands of dollars expensive. This little app, because of the IQ feed service is so good, you can use it for both real time, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, as well as historical. So it can act for both. Now, have you seen the queue collector? If you don't want to get the queue collector, but want to do it through Java, you can do it this way by running this kind of app. And again, you get the source code available to you so you can extract all you want. So here you get all the different data points daily, uh, intraday, tick data. So let's let's do the data points for, uh, I'm just going to use IBM and Apple as examples um, because I'm, I'm automatically subscribed to the US. Uh, Feed. Let me just kill this as usual. Hang on here. Okay, that should shut that up. Okay. All right. So we've got the IBM here. Get data. So you can see here, it's gotten all historical data. Now the question is, how far back does it go? It's still downloading it. Okay. Now I believe you obviously can set date ranges. I'm sure you can do that in the code, but I just want to show you some of the cool things that you can do with this. Okay, and again, this is this is this is tick data. So the other beautiful thing about it is if you've been following me with Redis, I'm now able to hack these apps that I'm showing you and take this data and push them into a Redis cluster or a Redis um, a Redis uh, whatever. Okay. I'm just gonna tear that down. Now because we're now going on crack or, or like, like I said, this is financial data crack, really, when you think about it. But where it gets really interesting, because I'm, I'm mentioning, uh, uh, I'm mentioning, let me see here, uh, let me just load up this search engine. Okay, so recently I was just on the Redis site, and then there's this neural, I think it's called Redis Neural, and uh, this is where it gets really crazy. The founder of Redis, the guy who wrote Redis and C, this is what he's written. He's now adding a new, uh, a new add-in extension, whatever you call it, for neural networks. So now you can now have all your data from IQFE push in the, into Redis on top of you have the ability now to play around with the machine learning component all within Redis with this project. This is awesome because it is alpha code. Um, just so you know, 
Um, but there was a, 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 a sentiment analysis piece here, case study, okay? So uh, he, he recommends not, it may not work, but again, you get the source code, so you could probably hack it to your, to your delight. Okay, so this, this came out in two months ago, okay? So it's brand spanking new, pretty close. This thing is really going to just, just take Redis to that next level and, and really change everything on how you do neural nets and using Redis now as a neural net internally within the um, confines of Redis on top of being able to use uh, Redis as, as a cluster on top of that. And the best part is when you start now being able to push in uh, this, this data here, as I've shown you with this historical socket and again you, you just saw what I just ran so uh, it's pretty exciting what I'm showing you here okay so the next one I want to show you is the socket for level one okay where's my run there we go okay so we're now running our second app okay so this is now layer one detail of what we can get for um, from my key feed. So now we can do something called a watch. So let's say if I want to, and th these are all ticks. This is level one data ticks. Okay. So you go watch. So now what's happening is each and every tick here is live from the markets because it is open at 138 on a Friday, New York time. The markets are open. So these are actual live ticks coming in from the market. And again, I can put in watch as well for Apple. So I can I can literally uh hang on here. So now we have app IBM. I think hang on, I gotta do it with capitals. So now we have IBM and, and Apple ticks coming in to this console. And once again with this app, I can then push that same data into my Redis. That's freaking cool. And you see here we have lots of data to work from. I'm not gonna go into what each one is on each tick, but this is very powerful. Okay, and then there's obviously other options here within this little app that are part of the functionality from the IQ feed API. Okay, I'm just gonna show you some of the level. Now, the other cool thing is if I paid for it, uh, which I won't have access to when I try to run this, uh, as well, this is level two data, but you can pay for it. It's a couple, like 50 bucks or something. It's, it's cheap. Um, I'm not there yet because I don't need it, but I will need it at some point. So again, let's let's do IBM. But what will happen is in the console, say, uh, I think somewhere in here, in here somewhere, uh, it, it, it like obviously it's not working because I don't have access to it because I'm not paying for the level two option. Somewhere in there, I, I, I did see, it did say I don't have access to uh, level two. Somewhere in here, uh, yeah, it's telling me I don't have access. So we knew that was going to happen. Okay, so now click that. So obviously, I've shown you the um, launch, launch the uh, launch the feed app. So the next one we're going to look at is this is a very cool one. Uh, run file. This is just a simple look up the client. So what's this one? bitching about cannot okay so it's looking for the same problem of IQG so internally I have to change that but I'm not really gonna worry about that a whole lot let me try running the news one okay, so here's the new socket one okay so here this is just generic news. So I have two versions. I can get the XML or the text version. So um, I can do it by headline, submit request. Um, I did see it working. Let's see here. Okay, so here we go. These are all the different types of news, analyst, analyst update, stocks on the move market overview, Canadian, so on and so forth. 
see headline by symbol. Okay, so let me try this IBM again. So here's all the latest news on IBM. IBM to develop blockchain solution, so on and so forth. Okay, so you can do that by by your symbol. Let's see. Um, now, just so everybody knows, uh, let's see if I can do this. Now, I do have uh, F, uh, I have also um, data for Forex. So let's try this one if it comes up. Nothing. Okay. That reminds me. Let's see if I go to level one data. I just want to try this as an example. Rerun this guy. See if I can do any of the data here. Or sorry, the Forex. So Euro, USD, FXC, and that's the symbol name from within uh, IT feed. And again, you can tell that FXCM is their data source for that. Let's see if anything. Yep, so there you go. So I'm now getting tick data, okay, for the Forex pair right from uh, FXCM. Now, if I wanted, just as a, as a hint, I could also request uh, another service from IKEFI for 10.4. So that would enable me to download data uh, from 40 different Forex sources through 10.4, the service run by uh, Morningstar. Um, so I could get 40 different sources by that, and it's just basically determined on the symbol name. So if you have, let's say, the Irish bank, you go EURUSD -E dot, and then the name of that data source. So it is working quite nicely for Forex data as well. Okay, so we can't run that. We've shown you that. Now, this is, this is really valuable. Um, this is really, really valuable. Now, if you're a cheap ass who wants to only use Yahoo for option data, they keep changing that every so often, and it will really frustrate you when you have to update your scripts and whatever to reflect those changes. But here, this is the big benefit of being part of a commercial uh, paid service. You don't have to worry about this stuff because they don't want, if you're paying for it, they don't want to have, make a change, break your code, and then expect you to still keep paying them. So they're going to go out of their way to make sure they're not um, breaking people's code as they make changes. So having this option chain data is, is really powerful. And I say that for the only reason of um, if... You're like me, who wants to go and take things to the extreme, where you want to watch commodities, you want to watch um, uh, futures on currencies to get a really gl good glimpse of what's happening there out in the markets. This is how Bloomberg News operates, is a lot of the professionals will uh, watch option chain data, will watch uh, commodities, the futures market as well. Here we can do that, spe specifically around options. So in this case, I'm just going to focus on IBM as an equity. And then I'm going to get the symbols. So here, here are all the different uh, contracts that I would have access to. Okay. Now, if I put in um, the futures, I don't think we'll get anything. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not subscribed to, um, I'm not, I'm not subscribed to a futures uh, subscription. But again, you could which can be very expensive actually. I mean, it's not IQ feed, it's, it's the exchange. They, they charge a fee, professional or not, to get access to that data. So as a non-professional, that's the key, non-professional when you sign up to get the cheaper uh, um, service for that uh, exchange using, I don't know, oil for on NYMEX, uh, you pay that $5 and then you're gonna get access to that futures data through IQ feed, through these kind of apps. Okay, so you can see here we get futures spreads, futures, and future options, okay? This is powerful because you'd pay thousands upon thousands of dollars a month to get access to this. But with the IQ feed, kind of like being like a one-stop shop to all this type of data, I mean, you could go crazy. And being now through the API, being now on non-Windows, specifically Mac in my case, this is like, I'm a kid in a candy store, right? Merry Christmas, thank you very much. So you can see the power of this type of app and being able to access it. And then as I showed you, 
how would you push that data into Redis? And, and plus, with that one project that just showed you here with this neural net that Redis is building, it's, it's going to be an exciting future. Okay, so this is the option chain, uh, how to access that. Very, very powerful. Very, I mean, anything out there that I've seen, that, that in itself is awesome. Now, um, this streamer is kind of cool. What it is is just a console app, and it does nothing different than the app that I showed you, um, Level 1 Socket. So you, you can add um, stocks or whatever symbols onto a stream and then watch it. And what you would do with this type of app is whatever is pushed out there, you just push it into Redis, and then you have your scripts at the other end, the listeners or whatever, uh, process that data, and then do their calculations, and then from there, generate those trading signals that we've talked about. Again, if you haven't seen, you you got to get on this, the Interactive Brokers uh, Workshop API, because this is this is like the next level if you want to use IB as your broker. So what would happen is because we now have the ability with IQ Feed, as I've envisioned, now we're here, we can now push all this data into into Redis, have our other and the uh, IB. Uh, listeners and all that fun stuff listen for the signals but the, the key behind it is that as the data gets pushed into Redis uh, you generate your trading signals done in Python or whatever you want and then you have those signals generate orders for you uh, and push those into IB and I've shown that in my workshop time and time again Wow um, okay so we have that now um, this is streaming bars socket. Okay, let's see what we can generate here. Um, I don't think, yeah, that's not an app. Okay, symbol, lookup, socket. Let's check out this one. Okay. So here, what we've got is we can um, enter in our symbol, uh, IBM again. And then just go get the data, listed markets, security types. These are just filtering. Uh, there we go. Boom, 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 boom. And it's still getting it. I mean, that's a lot of data. So these are, uh, I don't even know what this is. Interbank, base, load, monthly. I don't even know what this is, folks. Um, simple lookup socket. I, I have no idea. But I'm sure. Oh, I think these are future contracts for IBM or option contracts. Yeah, so um, let's see what Apple generates. Yeah, I think these are option contracts. This is this is really powerful stuff, folks. Hope you're uh, like me and honest. Okay, system info. Um, I can show you that. I, I'm I'm not gonna get too excited by that, but I think that just gives you um, account information. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about stuff like that. All right, so you can see the power of what I just shown you. We've talked about Redis. We've got lots of videos on that on the YouTube channel. And we've also addressed the Interactive Brokers workshop, API workshop to be able to now have your, your scripts, maybe in Python, whatever they are, retrieve them from Redis, and then generate your signals and have the other listeners for your broker listen to those signals and execute the trades. Because we've got, we, so we've got a complete walkthrough from end to end now, thankfully with this, with the Redis, and I think uh, very exciting days ahead. All right, so uh, over and out, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks, bye.